Today we're going to be looking at an Imagine 2670 MK. This is a 2024 model from Grand Design. This is probably my favorite floor plan in the Imagines. I really, really like this one. And I will show you guys specifically why I like it. But we'll go ahead and take a look at the inside and then we'll come around and take a look at the outside. So we'll go right up these solid steps here. And as we walk in, you've got your bathroom here, which you can close that door. I have had a lot of customers say like, oh boy, we walk right into the bathroom. So you can close this off. Uh, it's just on the bungee right now. But if we close that off that way, when you step in, it's more like a door and then a space on your left and a space on your right. We'll start with the bedroom at the front. Uh, the reason that they don't have a bed slide, a lot of times people mention the bed slides. All of the imagines are made to be half ton towable, at least in theory, okay, with the right half ton. My half ton is not going to tow this thing. <laughs> My 2004 Ford can't quite handle that much. Uh, it can't really handle more than a stick of gum. But anyways, that's why there's not a bed slide. They will, on all of the imagines, have this walkable space around it which is very, very commonly requested. It sucks when the bed is sideways and you're trying to climb over each other to get out or to get in or diving onto the bed, so on and so forth. Um, you've got good hanging storage on either side as well as some drawers that'll give you some, uh, some space for kind of folded clothes and things like that. Of course, there's always storage under the bed too. And I've mentioned this many times, the cabinetry on the Grand Designs is phenomenal, especially on their Imagines. These are very, very solid. Uh, this is European poplar. It's not cheap particle board. You don't feel it kind of shake and wobble whenever you open it up. Uh, even a lot of houses use the particle board. Uh, but this is very, very good construction on the Grand Designs, which is common with Grand Design. Uh, they're a company that warranties for full-time living. And if you're gonna pay out money to fix somebody's camper, you got to make sure that you made a darn good camper so that way you're not constantly spending money to fix the stuff that breaks. So also on all the imagines, you'll see the cubbies very commonly requested. You've got an outlet and a USB spot in each of the cubbies and then some reading lights there as well. So you have two ACs in all of your grand designs, 13.5 K BTU here, and there'll be a 15 K in the main. They will both run into your ducting system or when you have this open like this, it'll come straight from the dump. So you can shut that off, it'll be a little quieter, and then it'll come out of your ducting system. Both of them run into that ducting system, and both of them will have a thermostat, so you can adjust the temperature on both sides of the camper. So, okay, we'll take a look at the rear. I'll point just one more thing out. That is your heat duct. Your heat ducts are not gonna be on the flooring. Again, going with the construction kind of full timer theme there. You want an even flow heat system. You don't wanna blow your heat straight to your roof, because hot air rises naturally, so you want it to disperse a little more evenly. You don't want to catch your dirt and crumbs on the floor. You'll see another heat duct right there, and actually, we'll peek into the bathroom as well. You'll see one right under the shower there. So, try and keep those heat ducts off the floor. And they're known for insulation, very, very good insulation, and so uh, that's another reason you don't want to cut into the floor. There's actually a lot of reasons to not cut into your flooring and put heat ducts, so. Anyways, um, shower's decent size on this one. In fact, actually, I almost don't need the skylight. I'm six foot two, um, and as always, a lot of space to move around my arms. Um, the Imagine showers are, are pretty darn good. If I was full timing, I think I'd be okay in an Imagine. I'd prefer something a little bigger just because, you know, I'm used to a house with a, a decent sized shower, but it doesn't have to be because it, it very much fits the bill. Nice deep storage here for towels and things like that uh, going all the way down there. And then you also have your temperature gauge. There is a tankless hot water heater on all of the Imagines and it's 60,000 BTUs of heat. So that is gonna basically keep your water hot indefinitely as long as you have propane, it'll run off of LP. Uh, porcelain toilet as well, I often point that out. And you've got a uh, plastic lid, so keep that in mind. If you touch on the toilet at the top, you're gonna think it's plastic, but it's actually a porcelain toilet. So there's your bathroom there again, higher quality porcelain toilet. Okay, now let's talk about why this is my favorite unit. So first off, you have the setup with your recliners right here. And then if you take a look up front, you've got this, I, I call it a televator. I can't remember the technical term, a rising TV. I, I don't know, but it goes in and then it'll come up out. And so you can bring that down and you'll see that right there will come down over top of it. And you've got a bunch of kitchen counter space. Uh, you've got your island right here. 
This, by the way, is, is Formica. This is a folded Formica. It's kind of like a solid surface or an imitation solid surface. Lightweight, but it lasts very long. There's no trim that's gonna slowly deteriorate and fall off over time. Excellent option for the countertops. Uh, but anyways, I like that your recliners are facing your TV. You've got heat and massage and a light strip on your recliners. Those are the Thomas Paines, if y'all are familiar with them. You've got the fireplace in this unit, which puts out almost 5,000 BTUs of heat, and that is electric. The key with that, guys, if you're staying at a park, a lot of times the electric is thrown into the park payment. So you're basically getting free heating from this. Um, there's your switch, by the way, for your TV. And then, of course, a little extra storage there as well. Um, now that, I, I don't recommend using that exclusively in freezing temps. Usually I say once you get below 40 degrees, you need to run your furnace because this is a four season camper. You've got R30 insulation in your underbelly. You've got dryer vents going from your furnace all the way through to your tanks. So that way you're not freezing up. Okay, so if you're under 40 degrees, run your furnace. You can control that off of your thermostat. Run your furnace a little bit so that way your underbelly doesn't freeze up. But if it's 40 degrees plus, run the mess out of that thing and you will heat this entire unit. Uh, it's, it'll heat you out, in fact, so be careful with that. Um, okay, booth dinette over here. Obviously, that table can collapse down. You put the cushions on top and make it into a bed. Not for a guy my size, because I'm 6'2", but maybe for a couple of kiddos. This is another reason this one's my favorite. I love the ones with office space. Um, I do a lot of work on my computer, obviously, making YouTube videos here. Uh, but I do a lot of work on my computer, and so I always like having my own space. So I love that. Uh, this was especially popular during COVID when people were working from home, which is still fairly common, working from home. Let us know in the comments if you're working from home and if you fit that bill. 12-volt uh, refrigerator. No more propane electric. This is going to be 12 volt, or if you hook it up to power, it'll go off of your 120. Okay, but this is going to cool a lot faster. And you've also got solar panels installed on all of your Grand Design roofs, which is going to charge your battery, and your battery can run your fridge. So even if you don't have power, your fridge is going to stay cold. Um, oven, three burner top, microwave. This stuff gets you started. The ultimate hack, in my opinion, for the campers is going to be air fryer and instant pot. Um, that's just uh, in my opinion, but uh, there you go. Something I often fail to mention, you do have CO2 detector and there are motion sense lighting uh, on these Imagines, which can really help at night uh, when you're walking around. It'll just sense you walking and turn on that light for you. Uh, but you got the CO2 detector right there. We'll go ahead and take a look at the outside. So you're gonna have two slide outs, one on this side, one on the other. This is actually another reason I like this camper. So most couples coaches do not have an outdoor kitchen. But on this one, you've got a fridge to keep your cold beverages, and you've got a griddle here. This is gonna be a flat top, um, and you can uh, do some cooking on the outdoors. Your awning is actually going over top of this slide, and it'll extend out over it and give you a little bit of shade. Just make sure it's not too windy. If you're about 15 mile per hour winds or more, you definitely need to close up that awning. Uh, spray port right here. This is going straight to your fresh tank. You can spray out cold water, not hot, but cold water. And uh, they've got it kind of strategically over here next to your griddle. So you can use that to spray off shoes or whatever. Okay. Moving on to the front of the cabin. You've got your storage for your sewer hose right down there. Stabilizing jacks, which by the way, I've had customers ask me before, why did they cheap out on the stabilizing jacks? manual instead of electric well the stabilizing jacks sit wider on the frame which is going to make them a little more stable they're rated for a little more weight so they're kind of more durable and at the same time there's a few bolts on the side of that you can pull those nuts off put a new one on there and easy replacement cheap replacement as opposed to an electric system which is going to be a lot more of a pain in the butt if it ever goes out or you should probably say when it goes out so I think that the manual are a much, much better option. That's me and my opinion. Y'all let me know what you think. Uh, but in any case, that is what Grand Design's gone with. You got your tough ply and your pass-through storage, protecting it in ways that the old linoleum can't. So that's a welcome change with the 2024 models. And then uh, coming around front, you'll have your electric tongue jack, which will help you hitch up. Bird poop is gonna come with it for free, okay? So y'all let us know if you appreciate that. Um, you can attach the battery right here, and that's what we'll mount for you if you do business with us. 
Um, you'll have two 25 pound propane tanks and we will fill those up as well. Um, okay, if we come to your docking station right here, you can run your sewer, or excuse me, not your sewer hose, but your water hose up through here. This is your main connection. Uh, with this going down, yep, you'll see it says city and tank fill. So this is your city water if you're at a park. Run it down through there. Close up your baggage doors, which by the way are insulated. They've got the slam latches instead of the little uh, twisty turny knobs. I don't know the technical term for what those are called. Uh, but you'll have your outdoor shower with the hot and cold water. And then you'll also have uh, an outlet got your satellite and cable connections right here. Disconnect for your battery, disconnect for your solar. Uh, battery you'll want to keep on. If you pull that out, you can kind of save your, your battery life. Uh, the only thing that'll still come from the battery charge is going to be to that CO2 detector because that's emergency. Solar, you only take that out if you don't have a battery on the unit. Once you're on the road and you've got a battery, you might as well plug that in because once you plug it in, then your solar panel on the roof is taking the charge this deal is going to send it to your battery so just kind of trickle charging for you there okay your prep for tpms system super nice feature if you do a lot of traveling you can get a kit you'll attach the the um, the sensors to the stems on your tires and then that way through an app on your phone you can monitor your tire pressure tire pressure off or we, or tires getting too hot is the most common reason for blowouts as i'm sure many of you guys know uh, also bad tires, which you do not have on your Grand Design. You have good tires, no pun intended, uh, pun intended, whatever. Goodyear Endurance tires. Uh, these come with a five-year warranty. First year is like a no questions asked uh, type deal. So you got galvanized steel up in your wheel wells in case you ever do have a blowout. Uh, but again, you monitor that tire pressure, be careful in the heat, change your tires out every few years and you should be good. Uh, there are red drums in there, by the way, that are going to indicate the uh, ABS system that they started adding on the 24 models. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. That'll keep you from skidding in the ice or fishtailing too much on the road. Gray tank's going to be right up there. Hopefully y'all can see that. There you go. Black tank's going to be right there and your dump is just right there. There is no uh, rear, actually, wait, did I just stick my foot in my mouth? This one's not technically a rear kitchen. Usually the rear kitchen or the rear bath have a, uh, another gray lever. And it actually looks like there is a gray lever, but there's not a dump. Okay, so this will be for your kitchen. That'll be your kitchen sink right there. Uh, but there's no dump, so it, it's all routed to that front one. So that, that's nice. But uh, make sure you pull that one. Don't forget about that one. <laughs> so, okay, there's your water heater. Okay, on the rear, I, I, I've often mentioned this. Um, if there's not a ladder, guys, for access to your roof on the back of your camper, that could be a really bad sign. It could mean one of two things. Either you've got a hung wall, which means you got no insulation, you just got studs and fiberglass tacked on, uh, and it's not gonna be a very, a very um, what do we say, structurally sound back wall. Uh, or it could mean, it could either mean that or that your roof is cheap and that they don't want you up on the roof because if you get on the roof, you might fall through. Uh, neither one of those apply to Grand Design. You have a fully laminated back wall and insulated, and you also have a fully walkable roof. In fact, the, the TPO material up on the roof is UV treated, and it has a limited lifetime warranty on it. So keep it cleaned up there, wash it off every now and then, check the cutouts on your seals. Matter of fact, you know, I don't normally do this. Let me see if I can just climb this one-handed. Do it for the YouTube, right? There you go. You can see your ACs, your vents, your wine guard, which is your antenna. You've got this to remove the pressure in the roof. There you go. Okay, we'll come on back down, but you'll want to check those seals. Keep them up to date. You don't want cracks and things because then you're going to have to, you're going to have water starting to get into that roof and you don't want water on wood. That's a fast way to total your camper. So. Okay, guys, I think that's about it. Y'all let me know if I missed anything. I hope y'all enjoyed that. We will see you guys on the next video.